So one thing I think is overlooked in this situation, we, we know that Kyle Shanahan's good with quarterbacks, right? Matt Schaub and Matt Ryan and Jimmy G worked and Brock Purdy worked. Hell, even Nick Mullins looked like a decent, you know, decent quarterback for a little bit. Looked like like a very, very good backup, even though he's probably a low-end backup, right? So we, we know he can work with pretty much any quarterback, right? But the thought process was, if he could do that to an average quarterback, talent-wise, right? Because no, nobody thinks Matt Ryan's lighting the world on fire with talent. Same with Jimmy G, same with Brock Purdy, right? They're, they're accurate, they're on schedule, right? They, they do some of the little things well, but they don't have a ton of talent when compared to a bunch of other quarterbacks like Mahomes, Allen, etc. Um, but, the, but the thought process was, if, they could do that, if he could do that to an average quarterback, what can he do with an uber-talented quarterback like a Trey Lance? Because there's no doubt that Trey Lance has the talent. Huge arm, can make... A lot of really nice down the field throws, big, strong, can move. Um, reminds me a lot of a Josh Allen, right? Where he's very raw, so he's going to rely on his legs a lot in his first couple of years. Hopefully, you you just hope he can refine the passing a little bit to get the sixty four percent, give you a couple splash plays, right? And clearly, that has not panned out. But one thing that I don't think enough people talk about is that they haven't really given it a fair shake. Where, like, the first year, it was kind of a wash. You were like, okay, he's going to be a project, right? So Jimmy's going to, you know, Jimmy's going to uh, start. And they got Trey Lance into a couple packages. He was a little bit hurt here and there. You know, he hasn't played he hadn't played football in a while because the whole COVID thing, he was at a small school, right? So some of those small schools, like small D1s and D2s, just canceled the entire season, right? So he hadn't played football in a long time. He played, like, eight total games in college or something like that, something crazy. And then he comes in, so he's getting his body's getting used to it. He's getting used to it on the mental side of the thing, uh, of the game. And then second year, he goes in, so they move off Jimmy. Second year, he is the clear-cut starter. Plays one game in a monsoon. Loses. Didn't look great. And then plays a second game. Three plays into the game. Breaks his leg. And then Brock Purdy plays well. And then all of a sudden, we just assume that Trey Lance is never going to get an opportunity. He was the starter, broke his damn leg, and all of a sudden, he's just washed, can't play, isn't a good, he's a bust. And I'm, I'm not saying I think he's going to be great. We, I just have no idea. But my question is, when did he lose the ability to compete for the starting job? Like, it's almost like it's not even discussed that he's even in the conversation to see the field. Right? It's like Purdy, Darnold. And Lance, that's what that's all you're hearing right now. I don't think he's been given a fair shake. Like I think he should be the starter going into this year. I can see the argument for that. I mean, it's not his fault that he got hurt. That's what I'm saying. And I, I and I know Brock Purdy played well, but Brock Purdy's near not nearly as talented. I guess maybe just the lack of experience. I guess Brock has played more football games recently. Oh, he's a four-year starter. It's just like it all boils back down to. Have you really ever heard any hype coming out of the 49ers camp that, oh, you need to see Trey Lance? Like, even in the first, you know, year of camp. Very, very little bit. And I feel like if he was somebody that they thought could be, like, really good, light the world on fire starter, or at least just start for the damn team, that there would be at least some good positive things coming out of camp and, like, you should see this throw. And it, it, I mean, come on. We've been in camp for, what, a couple days now? My feed has been flooded with highlights from camp. On any social media app, you name it. It's That's everywhere. If Trey Lance was any good, you Let's would see have him. seen so many clips of it already. It, he doesn't even have to play a football game. That's a good point. I just think... Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point. I just don't know. And we haven't seen it. Well, there, we've there barely seen it. Yeah, there is a big unknown. I just think... I mean, so you look back... I mean, we have the time. So you, you look back at his game logs, right... He's played, like, I think five games in his career in terms of, like, starting quarterback. Trey Lance, game, logs. Let's see. This this, this things I do right here. There you go. I don't know why. I don't know why I so much enjoy, like, this much digging here. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see. What games did he start? So, he starts the Arizona game. Doesn't play all that well. Has no touchdowns. One pick. Pass rating of 58. Uh, but then he plays against Houston, which, like, 10 weeks later, completes 70% of his throws, two touchdowns, one pick, 116 pass rating. 
runs the ball pretty well, 31 yards on the ground. And then the next uh, next season, right, he's going into the, the season as the starter, has a tough game, 50 pass rating, but he's two for three to start the next game. And then, like, the fifth play of the game breaks his leg. Like, I just – four starts? That says we're giving the kid four starts? I mean, I would give him another chance for sure, but I wouldn't be – I wouldn't be dead set on him starting for my team all year. I'd keep him on a very, very short leash. I, like, I'll give him half the season. I'll give you half the season. You don't screw up too bad. We can keep this going, figure out what the rest of the year is going to look like for you, let you develop a little bit. But if we play, and three games into it, you are the reason we're losing football games, I have a guy that can start behind you. Sam Donald can... or Trey Lance. Exactly. I'm saying for you, who'd you pick right now? Sam Donald or Trey Lance going into the season. If Brock Purdy wasn't there. You had to pick between Trey Lance or Sam Darnold. We know what Sam Darnold is. I would say he'd be a great guy to sit on the bench for a couple of games and see what you have in Trey at least. So you would go in and you'd pick Trey Lance to start the season? If it was between those two, yes. I could not agree more. But okay. I would I would keep him on a very, very short leash. Brock Purdy or Trey Lance? I, I would take Brock. Brock because younger, I know he can play, and I think... I think he can have a pretty good upside. He had a good season last year. He earned himself the starting role. I feel like if you took that from him right now, if it's between Brock Purdy and Trey Lance, and you take that starting job away from Brock Purdy after everything that he comes in, Mr. Irrelevant, plays his ass off, at least above expectations for what we thought was going to come from Brock Purdy, and then you just come into the season and be like, hey, man, all that work you did, thanks so much for keeping us on course. But we're going to move on. You're going to be the backup this year. That happens all the time, though. No, I agree with you, but I'm playing devil's advocate. That happens all the time. I know. But I just think in this situation, you got to roll with Brock. And, if, of course, if Brock starts trailing off and it looks like, oh, okay, maybe last year was an anomaly and he's really not that good and, and then we need to explore other options, then fine. Put, put Trey in. Give him a the shot. All right, I, so now, I wouldn't be dead set on either of the two. Okay, so you're saying Brock, then Trey, then Sam, depth chart was. Yeah. It's got to be the is it the best third string quarterback in history? It's got to be. At least the most talented. It's got to be. It's interesting. It's interesting. I don't know. I mean, Obviously, I don't know what I did. There's an argument that Brock Purdy with the whole rookie contract thing, uh, him being a seventh-round pick makes significantly less than Trey Lance. You know, Sam yeah. Darnold's not making a ton of money either. There's a very real argument to say, like, that's a great roster that deserves to be paid well, like every other position out there, yeah. that if Brock can right the ship for the next three years making nothing – then there's a real argument that that's the best way to achieve success. Yeah. That's probably what I would do. I'd probably go Brock. I, I don't think you're going to win anything big with any of the three, though. I should put that in there, too. I don't see a Super Bowl with Brock. I don't see a Super Bowl with Trey. I don't see a Super Bowl with I Sam just don't Donald. think you know a Trey. Like, I think, I think the only one that I could see a Super Bowl is Trey Lance because we don't know what he is. Like, he could be a Super Bowl-caliber quarterback. We've seen four games and a game where he came in halfway through. I'm sorry, three games in a game we he's come in halfway through. Like. So you're saying we need to see Trey? Like hundred percent. You have to see Trey Lance. Okay. So are you Plus, doing the same thing? Not, so if it's between Brock and Trey for you, are you going are you going Trey? No, 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 I'm still going Brock. I think Brock's right now a better player. Yeah. And it's a more of a win now situation. I mean that roster is ready to win. Yeah. It's just missing that guy. Fair enough. Uh 